Soil liquefaction is, as you probably imagine, it's when soil turns into a liquid. And this can happen as a result of an earthquake. In many regions, quite famously in Christchurch, that was a liquef liquefaction was a big problem in Christchurch. Um, but not only there, uh, also in Kobe, San Francisco, many regions that have earthquakes tend to have liquefaction. Let me explain what it is. It tends to happen mostly where it's sandy. The soil is very sandy. The thing with sand is that sand are quite large particles, quite large irregular shaped particles. So what that means is that there's air gaps in between the sand particles. Now this tends to happen in low-lying regions where there's actually water underneath, so like a water table underneath the soil. And of course what that water table is going to do is the water molecules are going to rise up in the sand and kind of like, you know, sit below the surface but fill some of those air gaps. Now, what happens when an earthquake hits is that the ground is shaking and these particles are squeezed together and compressed so that the water has to go somewhere. If you imagine these particles are being squeezed together, what happens is the water molecules move upwards and it saturates all of this sand and the water bubbles up to the surface and creates a liquid, a liquid sandy, it's essentially like quicksand. Now the amazing thing that happens is that when you stop shaking, that's when the water comes out. Alright, there we go. So liquefaction, soil liquefaction, is the liquefaction of the soil and it occurs in an earthquake because the particles are being squeezed together and compressed and it shoots the water up or forces the water up into the upper layers of the soil and makes them turn to liquid. So if you imagine that if you've got a house or a car or something on, on top, something with weight, with the shaking and the water moving up, what tends to happen is that the um, the house or the, the car or anything with weight tends to sink down into it like it's quicksand and it makes the, the footings of the house fail and that the house can collapse. So what can we do about it then? Well there's a couple of things. Firstly, um, if, if it's a known liquefaction area because of the sandy substrate and the water table underneath, well one thing we can do is actually um, drive piers or piles down underneath the building before building the building. So what that allows is that um, it, it provides, I mean it, it, it avoids the sand and provides a stable base, a stable foundation. Another thing that can be done though is that before building occurs they can actually vibrate this um, soil and to remove those air gaps. So they, they use large machines to actually cause vibration of the soil to push out those air gaps and highly compress the soil before building starts. So that's soil liquef liquefaction and some of the ways in which it can be solved.